Welcome to Tech 4PD, the technology show for product development. I'm Jim Brown. I'm one of your hosts. And I'm Chad Jackson. I'm your other host. And today we're going to be talking about a, an old but very good topic, simulation-driven design. Great. So here's how the show is going to work. First, we're going to start off and we're going to share some background and set the stage. Um, then what we'll do is we're going to go ahead and debate on our views on this particular topic. And uh, Chad and I often have different opinions. We'll be sharing those with you. And then what we're going to do is take a look into the crystal ball and give you our idea of what we see happening in the future in simulation. And then uh, finally, we'll take a look at the consequences from last episode's debate. That's right. And actually for this episode, uh, the consequence, and you'll vote on who the winner is, the loser will have to, that's right, dress up in a Star Trek uniform, uh, complete with Vulcan ears, and go to a conference or a business meeting. We're looking forward to seeing Chad do that. Anyway, let's get started. <laughs> to set the stage with simulation-driven design, what we're seeing people try to do now is really try and move simulation earlier into the design process, right. not just at the end for validation and verification, <laughs> Uh, sort of final check, but earlier into the process so we can still make a lot of changes um, and, and use it to drive design as opposed to, uh, you know, put it in on the back end where, where all of the windows of opportunity have closed yeah, right. because of decisions that have been made and locked in. Right. But it's, it's certainly not easy. No. Uh, in my mind, there's four main things you need to know if you're going to be performing simulation of design. One is engineering physics. The second is uh, the simulation method being used. The third is how to use the simulation software. And the fourth is how to use the CAD software. Well, abs absolutely. And, and I think we've seen a lot of changes uh, and some evolution over the last uh, mm -hmm. four or five years where we've seen some blending. So we've seen embedded, you know, embedded uh, analysis tools within the software and not just, right. not just on the same menu bar, but actually in the same environment. So mm -hmm. it's much more familiar. Uh, we've seen um, some more hand-holding, some, some guidance, some wizards yeah. um, that really are trying to make it easier for the designers to really approach this process. And they may not get it perfect, right? I mean, it, it's, even if it's just directional, yeah. that's a lot better than waiting until it's too late to change, right? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So, you know, some of the guys that have been making those changes, you look at uh, people like MSC, uh, ANSYS, ESI Group, Altair Engineering, they're taking their simulation tools, actually putting them in the CAD environments. Like right. Well, well, and, and the, the bigger vendors as well, and not that they're all small vendors, but yeah. uh, you know, the larger suite providers in the design tool space, you know, the PTCs, DASO Systems, Seniors yeah. PLM, and Autodesk have also moved uh, tools into their own uh, into their own solutions. So we've seen this blending going on. Right, yeah. And the impact of that has been pretty important. So when you start to see simulation capabilities being integrated in the CAD tool, that really starts to address the last two challenges. How do you get to how do you learn how to use the simulation software and the CAD software? Yeah. The guidance that you're talking about really starts to address the first two challenges around well, what is the engineering physics that you need to know about to perform the simulation? as well as the simulation method. So there's been a lot of progress on these fronts. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I think that sets the stage. Let's, uh, yeah. let's have a little debate. <laughs> to kick things off, um, given today's capabilities, there's two paths to go. One is to take your designers and move them closer to simulation. Yeah. The other is take your analysts and move them closer to design. Right. Um, both valid paths, mm -hmm. which we're well, for me, it makes a ton of sense to take simulation analysts and get them uh, and more involved up front in the design right. cycle. And of course, the issue you're going to run into there is that they have a huge queue in terms of work for verification and validation. You know, how do you address that? I think, you know, if you can automate what they do, right. make them more efficient in that realm, then you can move them more up front. For me, you know, it would be great to have engineers involved, but considering those four challenges, I just think it's too much. I think it's too much too, but I think it's too much to ask our analysts to pick up and do more. And, and yes, you should make them more efficient, but mm. there needs to be more capacity. And, and you don't want to add handoffs. If you want to drive efficiency, you don't want to add more handoffs back and forth between engineers and analysts. So the design for capability to me is really much more important, even if it just means it's 
It's directional analysis. It may not be as, as accurate, but it doesn't need to be either. So I, I, I still think that's the way to go. And, and there's learning curves either way, right? I mean, analysts aren't exactly usually as versed on a CAD tool. Yeah, no, that's, you know, I think that's been a very, that's been a big concern traditionally. But if you look at what's happening in the market right now, there's a lot of new tools uh, that have come out to help simulation analysts prepare geometry for simulation. You look at what, for example, SpaceClaim is doing with direct modeling, uh, as well as some other ones, some guys like uh, PTC and Siemens as well, uh, making huge strides there. Yeah, no doubt, no doubt. But at the same time, I think there are also huge strides that make it easier for designers to be doing simulation. So let's, mm -hmm. let's just make it clear here. Yeah. If you're running an engineering department right now, mm -hmm. what would you do? Would you take your analysts and move them closer to, des closer to design, or would you take your engineers and enable them with simulation? Yeah, for me, I would take simulation analysts and move them more front. Uh, they're a proven commodity. Uh, I know that they can make an impact. So yeah. it, for me, it's an easy decision. It's an easy decision for me too. Proven commodity, but also a precious commodity. There mm. aren't enough analysts available to do that. We've got to get more capacity from the designers get it done earlier without the handoffs. So well, luckily they get to decide. But That's they right. know they know I'm right. <laughs> we'll see. Thanks. All right, now let's shift gears and uh, Jim and I are going to appear into our crystal ball and predict a little bit of the future of simulation driven design in the industry. Jim, you go first. Uh, first thing that I'm seeing is uh, definitely cloud computing um, and okay. the, the just yeah. huge amounts of resource that can be made available today on demand. Uh, the ability huh. to you know, access lots of processors, lots of memory you know, in parallel at the point that you need it without having all of that sitting around yeah. um, is I, I think just really compelling. Yeah, yeah, and certainly simulation has been computationally intensive. Yeah. So, I mean, that's something that can have a big impact. Um, an area that I want to talk about that usually you might not associate with the simulation is mobility. Um, you think a lot about compute resources, but with mobility, um, you could actively monitor and watch the progress of using, you know, compute resources like the cloud. Um, also, it, it's a good way to collaborate with others. So you don't have to be sitting in front of your desk to share uh, right. some results or the progress of your simulation. So I think I think that's going to have a big impact too. Yeah. Well, and speaking of visualization and sharing, I think another thing we're going to see definitely is data management with so many more yeah. simulations going on, um, particularly if you're using the cloud and you know sending multiple data sets across with, with some different design options, uh, bringing them back yeah. so you can make some trade-offs, um, being able to manage all of those and hopefully tie those back to the rest of the engineering process, I think it's going to be uh, a really interesting thing. We're starting to see a lot of that happen along with, um, along with automation and really yeah. trying to make each of those steps faster and more efficient as, as you were talking about earlier. And it's going to be great when all the simulation analysts can move forward in the design cycle. Yeah. But even more importantly, um, this is the fun part of the show. We're going to find out uh, what uh, what you, the audience, voted in terms of last week's debate. Uh, and we're going to have a take, take a quick look now at the consequence. Let's see. Now is the time for the consequence phase. And by the fact that you're seeing my lovely face here instead of Chad, that means that you decided to vote for granularity as opposed to integration. Great, <laughs> all. I still believe in integration. <coughs> Thanks for tuning in today. I'd also like to take the opportunity to thank our sponsors, PTC and Mentor Graphics, for backing the show.